Hello everyone, so today I will be giving some tips or how I study certain subjects like Sejarah, BM and so on. Uh, the reason why I'm making this video is because I have some friends that have been asking me how to study because they don't know where to start. And uh, I'm going to be as direct as possible and not uh, say too much filler, so here we go. Firstly, uh, how do I study BM? So, I haven't actually started studying BM properly yet, but I'm planning to read the, both of the textbooks, both Tingkatan 4 and Tingkatan 5. And the reason why is because the essay questions and the prebasa that is going to come out will be based on the textbook. So, read the textbook and then what you're going to do is you're going to try and identify the important points, like some of the articles, some of the stories, some of the pantun that you see in there. They might have some interesting words, they might have some interesting ungkapan. By ungkapan, I mean like interesting... Um, sentences that you can use in your essays and again there's also some pribasa and you might actually like need them in your essays as well as when you're answering the pribasa question in paper 2 so that's why I will read the textbook a lot of people ignore the textbook but it's really important because everything that will come on SBM will be based on the textbook including the the theme of the essays so some of the themes that are in the textbook include like environmental problems, politics, uh, sports, and so on. So read the textbook, read page by page, find the important points, and find the interesting, uh, interesting vocabulary, interesting like sayings that you can use in your essays, so you can get as high of a mark as possible. Another subject that people like to ask is Sejarah. So, personally, I do not need any reference books. However, I do make notes because it's easy to make Sejarah notes compared to other subjects. So, if you do not want to look at the textbook and if you're trying to uh, crop out or not study the less important ones because you're just trying to pass or maybe get C or whatever, all you can do is you can go to the link in the description below and click on my Notion link. So the Notion link has a summary of what I have written, of what I have typed, and also a more specific page for each chapter. So um, the difference between the Senarai and also the other chapter by chapter ones is for the Senarai, I chose the ones that I feel are the most important. Some based on gut feeling and also some based on what I have heard from other teachers. So for example, I prioritize a lot on Malayan Union as well as uh, chapter 2 of Tingkatan 4 which is I think the Golongan Intellectual. And the reason why I talk about Golongan Intellectual is because I heard that it's very important and, it's, and it came out in a lot of um, trial papers while um, the reason why I chose Malayan Union is because uh, this is my gut feeling lah. and a lot of teachers also mention Malayan Union as one of the most important chapters. So you can go to my Notion link and um, you can do whatever you want with it. You can duplicate it, you can print it out by converting it into PDF. I might, I also have a PDF version for, of it, so maybe I'll attach that in my Google Drive, but uh, we'll see. Just if you want to just pass, uh, you can refer to my, uh, you can refer to that link and try and click on it or um, also you should be doing a lot of uh, model questions lah. so i'm not gonna mention too much on like doing exercises or model questions if, because um you should do it for everything lah. like you're not going to be able to score high marks or even pass if you do not know how to answer so you must do model papers you must do model questions so yeah So how about maths and at maths? So uh, since I come from a private school uh, and we follow the UEC syllabus instead of the SPM syllabus for those subjects, uh, it's a bit harder because we do not know chapter by chapter and we might leave out one or two. So what I did is I bought some uh, workbooks from uh, a book, uh, the bookstore. Uh, I brought some for maths and I'm going to buy some from uh, no, I bought some for at maths and I'm going to buy some for maths as well if they're in stock. So um, the reason why I bought a workbook is because I want to do I want to make sure that I didn't leave anything behind because um, uh, you know I'm aiming for an A plus but for people like you who maybe uh, do not really want to get A plus maybe just want to get a credit like a C uh, personally I would focus on a few chapters for at maths and maths for at maths the popular ones include um, trigonometry solution of triangles 
linear law, linear programming, uh, index numbers, uh, differentiation and integration. Those are the most important ones because they always come up in the, the final questions. For maths, I am not completely sure because I haven't really studied that as in depth. But taxation, insurance, you know, consumer mathematics in general, as well as um, inequalities and um, what other what come, what else comes out normally? Uh, those are the ones that I remember right now lah. But uh, maybe I'll update it for when I get to know more. But those are the most popular ones. Oh, also uh, statistics. So statistics, consumer maths, and um, oh probability as well. So those are the ones that I would focus on. Uh, if you, if I want to, you know, get a B or a C. But if you're going for A plus, I should you should buy a book, and um, you know, uh, do all of the exercises and make sure that you're okay at everything. I almost forgot to talk about English. I know a lot of people don't really care about English much because they can guarantee an A plus or whatever. But uh, I do study English as well. I just don't do it as often because I have other things that I'm weaker at. But I remember to still study whatever you're good at. You have to keep uh, like refreshing it and make sure you answer properly and so on. So just for English, right? Uh, since I talk in English a lot, uh, that's that's enough practice for me. But I do need to do, like do essays once in a while. I need to do competitive questions. I need to try and um, make sure that my the marks that I get, since I'm doing a lot of model papers, I'm gonna try and attempt to get consistent marks. Like instead of like getting like 90 and like stopping, I'm gonna try and get like 90, then 95, then 85, and so on, and make sure that I keep getting 90 consistently. If I drop, then I'm gonna keep doing more. And it's a tip that I can use for other people as well, but I don't have the time for everything. So for English, yeah, just keep doing questions and do it until you reach a point where you just keep getting good marks. Then you're ready for an A+. Next will be the science subjects, because I do not take common subjects, I only take things per account none, but I'll get to that later. For the science subjects, uh, physics, biology, and chemistry, you must and I repeat, must do model questions. They are very important, and the reason why is because uh, normally the essay questions are out of the book uh, and require a lot of good thinking. So, for physics, I have already compiled some essay questions in a Google Doc, and I will attach that in the description as well. But um, for biology, I'm thinking about making a Google Doc for that, but we'll see first. And for chemistry, I might do one as well, but that one is more, more towards experiments. So, um, Again, just keep doing questions. But if you want to go for the popular chapters, um, personally, I would uh, say for physics, there isn't really one specific very important chapter. For chemistry, uh, chapter 6 of Form 4 is very important. Uh, that one comes up all the time. It's, it's, it's like the biggest chapter anyway. And also uh, electrolysis, uh, Form 5, Chapter 1, as well as uh, homologous series, Form 5, Chapter 2. So those are the three chapters that are I consider the big three, and they always come out in subjective, like at least like two or three questions sometimes. And uh, for um, biology, I'm not so familiar with biology, so I won't go much on that. But um, I will say this: they love talking about cells, and they love talking about plants, cells and plants. And uh, for animals, they normally like talking about symbiosis and stuff. But again, I'm not so familiar on biology, so don't take my word. But um, uh, mitosis, meiosis stuff, cells, uh, chromosomes, you know, those chapters. Uh, those are quite common, I see. And also the environment, yeah. They love talking about the environment. So um, you can try and do as many questions as possible and try to see what they normally ask about. Uh, that's what it's going to be. That is what most teachers are going to be asking and uh, since you know the SPM makers are teachers uh, whatever you see in the model papers is probably going to come on SPM not not exactly law of course but uh, it's gonna be like similar or a similar topic or maybe um, uh, in the same topic but something else you get me how about for speaking tests and uh, listening tests as well as Ujin Amali so, uh, for speaking tests, I have a friend who sent me some, uh, book, some model papers 
So I'm gonna use those because they include uh, paper three for English and BM. You know, not not English, BM only. But um, I'm gonna use those to try and practice my speaking. And um, it's in the Google Drive. I'm gonna attach the Google Drive as well, so you can refer to it. And uh, for listening tests, I have a Google. I also have a document for that to practice my listening. So uh, I guess I might send the English listening test eventually if I remember to. But uh, I'm not doing it now because I'm focusing on speaking tests. Um, uh, but yeah, for the B, for BM listening test, Ujjain Mendengar, there is. Uh, you can go to my study hub folder and refer to that. There is a listening test there as well. Maybe my friend's one, uh, Saswadi, because I didn't buy the Saswadi one. But yeah, for Ujjain Amali, I also. Um, I also took my friend's one for the three science subjects because I take all three sciences so right. So I took that, and um, they, uh, her one contains uh, some lab questions. So I know that you have been hearing some rumors on what will come out in SPM, but that one isn't finalized. So it, it can always change, you know. So um, I would be I will play it safe, and number one, try and go through a lot of. Um, experiments in the textbook and go for the ones that are realistic they won't be giving you like 20 plus microscopes to use they just kind of they be, not all school can afford microscopes right so anything about microscopes will not come out but maybe something about like fruits will come out like vitamins or you know you know you know what i'm talking about or maybe about metals or circuits something that can be uh accessible to uh, like 20 plus students at a, at a, in, a, in, in the same room Again, I do not expect there to be 20 microscopes. I don't not, I do not expect there to be like uh, 20 live animals. But um, yeah. And uh, if you're lazy, just I guess you can just pray to God and hope that the ones that you heard about will come out. Uh, or you can just do the model papers that I have in the Google Drive. I think the last two I'll talk about will be Prince Barakawan and Pendidikan Islam. Uh, those two are like my... Uh, one of my priorities other than BM of course at, at maths but um, for Pendidikan Islam I do a lot of exercises again because there are so much it's so much more compared to uh, something like Sejarah so that's why I have to uh, do a lot of exercises and after that then I memorize so I can get familiar with what will be out I really don't have a specific tip on what to study because um, I don't come from a Malay school, so I do not get as much info. But the info that I do get, um, I mean, I don't really get that much info. But my teacher tries to help me a lot, lah. And um, if you if you're just trying to pass, focus on K bar questions because K bar questions there's, there's at least like four of them in the paper, so it's worth a lot of marks. So try and practice your K bar questions. Try and answer the way they want you to answer. And um, also. Akhlak and uh, if you if you don't want to memorize too much, uh, I recommend you to go for um, Akhlak as well as Akidah. Ibadah also, but Ibadah is a bit more um, of course memorizing lah. But uh, if you want if if you want to memorize more, then you go for Sirah because Sirah is basically uh, Islamic sejarah. So yeah, for principle of perakawanan. Since I take it as an extra subject, I do not really learn it the same way as uh, my commerce friends do. But um, uh, one thing that I noticed is I didn't really learn a lot, a lot about like logic. Like why do we use this account? Why do you use this account? All we did was doing accounts, but not knowing why we use those accounts. So um, for that, the only way to do it is uh, you have to read notes and do a lot of objective questions. So you will be familiar with what will come up. So yeah, just keep doing objective questions. And uh, maybe if you're if you're crazy enough, you can go and like Google the notes, like the textbook. I haven't done that yet, but I might do it because you know I'm going for A plus and everything, right? So that is a, it's a huge goal. But uh, if you want to, uh, like, I set the bar high so I can achieve at least something lower. Like if I want to get an A plus, maybe I'll get an A. And um, I do want like at least five A plus, but we'll see. I'm not. I I am human, and uh, I'm not smart at everything. So, I'll just see whatever happens lah. And, um, I guess that's it. So, uh, my final thoughts. I'd, um, in general, I pray a lot. 
uh, I pray for my grace to be good and I pray to become a better person. Now. But uh, if you're religious, then keep praying and also pray for the people around you as well. Uh, God loves people who help others, so you can try and help others as well if, if you can help them. This is what I've been doing and I want to help more. And um, uh, one more thing is sleep early. Do not ruin your sleep schedule. Sleeping, trust me, waking up at like 6 to 7 is very, very underrated. It, you feel a lot more refreshed when you sleep at 9 and wake up at 7. Or sometimes you sleep at 8 and you wake up at 4. They actually feel really good, you know. Like, uh, it feels really fun. And it feels, you feel something refreshing when you wake up really early compared to waking up like in the middle of uh, the, the afternoon. So, um, try and wake, sleep, early, sleep earlier and wake up earlier. It's really underrated and do it especially before SPM. So, yeah, do not last minute everything because the most important thing you need is sleep. And I say that because I think a lot better and I can uh, answer k questions a lot easier when I'm actually energetic and when I'm actually not sleepy. So that's why I sleep a lot. But uh, do not oversleep as well. Do not sleep for like 10 hours. Sleep for like 8 to 9 hours. That's, that's enough for, uh, to be honest. Anyways, uh, I think that's all from me. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye.